Zoo presentation, Draft Science here on YouTube. Uh, a little quick Linux update. Um, so yeah, I'm using the 20 cinnamon thingy. And it's running a lot like uh, Ubuntu. It's kind of slow. And I'm running it on a regular hard drive now. And, oh yeah, things are a little clunky. SD drive, which is, I miss it. So <laughs> I'll have to go look on eBay, see if I can find another used one cheap. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so it, it finally is suspending correctly, so that's good. I don't know whether I fiddled with something that actually worked or not, but whatever, it's doing it. And uh, so it hasn't crashed yet, and so that's good. So this is like after four or five suspends, and it still seems to be working, almost, mostly. So we'll see if this video comes out or not. Um, but anyway, so I guess it is usable. Mostly. And anyway, but it is slow. And slow. Anyway, um, especially the boot. That's why it needs to suspend. Is because I can just can't wait those two minutes. Two minutes to load? Oh, no, come on. I can't wait two minutes. Anyway. All right, so on to the physics. So there was a couple of comments sort of relevant to each other in a way. So some guy uh, says, okay, gets the speed of light thing. Um, that as fast as light is, it's really slow compared to instantaneous, right? I mean, anything that's anything less than instantaneous is already really slow in a way. It's already infinitely slow from instantaneous's point of view. Um, uh, not instantaneous. Um, yeah, instantaneous. Yeah, simultaneous. That's the one I keep messing up. Anyway, um... So yeah, even snapping my fingers, see, oh, it seems quick, but no, it's really, really slow in terms of the universe. It's really slow compared to the speed of light, and the speed of light compared to instantaneous is really slow. So anyway, so he gets the time part, but then he asked me about time travel, and you're just like, shit, I just thought I, you got it. Time is a function. Time isn't a place. Time is a function. It's a function happening because the universe one thing doesn't happen instantaneously after another thing. Nothing happens instantaneously. Every bit of movement in the universe takes time. So time is just a function. It's not a place. You can't go to a place in time. It just cannot be done. The universe don't work that way. It's silly. Now, you can perhaps suspend your animation okay so that's the word they use suspend animation but you know it's really not enough to say those words because what does that mean oh that means that no force is affecting you none of your cells are degrading none of your uh, chemistry is ionizing nothing's happening no chemical reactions whatsoever no atomic interactions whatsoever well you can't do that yeah what kind of special environment are you going to put something in where no radiation can get to it, including gravity? Well, you're not going to be able to find that place. So you're fucked, okay? There's no suspended animation. Uh, you will rot, okay? I can cool you down, I can make you really cold, and you're still really hot compared to suspended animation. So compared to no force moving or interacting with atoms, you're still really, really hot, okay? So when they say they put something at zero degrees, they never did. Can't happen. It's still really hot compared to nothing. It just is. Uh, you can stop atoms from jiggling, but you're never going to stop the electrons and the protons from jiggling because they're the thing holding them together is the jiggle, the force. <clears throat> so I suppose I should have the graphic that says... Uh, force matter interaction yeah so I'll have to <laughs> remake that one um, because that's all there is um, and you can't kill the force and so you're stuck with interactions and uh, you will rot so yes you could probably lengthen how long it'll take you to rot okay so you won't die in a hundred years um, so that yeah they can freeze you and you could probably wait you know wake up a couple hundred years from now and you might still be in one piece but the longer you sit, the longer all of your cells, are, I mean, your, your atoms are still going to be chemically interacting to some extent, and they're going to be changing, and you're going to be changing into some other kind of thing. Uh, it's going to cause degrades.
um, changes really change is the same thing in this case so anyway this brings up another guy who brought up David Bohm you know and the pilot wave theory I guess is his thing um, he called it some other kind of whoop de doo loop de doo bullshit um, basically a religious nut I saw an interview with him and David Suzuki the Canadian guy who used to make some good little TV shows when I was a kid I mean a long time ago um, it's probably dead now sadly anyway but um, those were you know it's good stuff um, you know mechanical physics chemistry kind of stuff uh, Carl sagan -esque but, you know, more, you know, less boring. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, where was I going with that? Well, anyway, so, um, you know, and he's, he's based, but Bone was a real, seeking a, a God of the Gap answer. So, you know, he saw the conflict between relativity and quantum mechanics, and he just doubled down on the woo and created a, um, you know, might as well just call it a pilot gremlin, you know, uh, master gremlin theory. So, you know, to organize the chaos of the pixies and the fairies and the ogres and the, you know, trolls, um, you know, there's a fairy princess godmother thingy or something that organizes them all, you know, pilot way. <laughs> I mean, it's just another woo. Uh, so, you know, and then he overtly connected himself with a religious kook. Um... So what's the point? I mean, he had some good things to say about human psychology, I'll say that. I mean, uh, you know, in the fact of understanding that your body is just this reactive mechanism and blah, 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 and your thoughts really aren't your thoughts. They're just, um, you know, programs reacting. And the programs were programmed by silly crap about, you know, how far your mother stuck a thermometer up your ass. You know, that's what your thoughts are made out of, frankly, is a bunch of that shit. <laughs> Literally. Um, stupid events in your stupid life made you the stupid asshole you are. Uh, just the fact. Um, and the only way around it is do this logic thing and, um, you know, piece through your mental reactions, your thought process. When you hear different words, how do you react to them? What do they mean? Do you think of the word as meaning what it should mean? Like like when I say time, you know, it means places to people instead of meaning uh, a function, the, and a, you know, just, you know, of stuff interacting. And that certainly you could reverse time in your mind. You can make the chalk go backwards. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> you know, but you're not going to be able to do it in reality. Um, you're, we're not controlling the clock, you know, the clock is ticking in the physical universe, and there's no control mechanism. There's no place where you can just say, "Well, let's reverse the clock and go backwards." Not going to happen. Put everything back where it was. Um, you know, reverse the videotape. There's no rip R with little arrows pointing backward button anywhere. <laughs> You're never going to find any such button. It's a function, and functions just don't have a yeah, they just don't come, the play button doesn't come with the, uh, uh, extra buttons that do other things. It just plays, and that's all the universe does. So anyway, so those two things are sort of connected, so I might as well deal with the subject a little bit. But I don't even know how, why, you know, there's nothing to connect it to anything. So I can use certain pieces of evidence where you might get the idea that some of this stuff is just crap. Okay, so even when you do these Einstein thought experiments about moving half the speed of light and all that kind of crap, it comes with these huge physical implications. So if you made a spaceship and you could actually get it up to a fantastic speed, um, somewhere like half the speed of light or something, the fact is, is your spaceship would be blown to bits. Okay, so without some special, you know, magical mechanism you're going to use to protect it, um, the fact is little tiny pieces of dust in the universe, little tiny things are all of a sudden now going to have the velocity of half the speed of light. They're going to be moving really, 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 really fast in a sense that your motion is to some extent relative. That is, it doesn't matter which one of you is moving. Whether I move the bullet or I move your brain, it just doesn't matter, right? If I move one of them 15,000 miles an hour, uh, the same thing is going to happen. 
So if I move your brain 15,000 miles an hour into the bullet, same thing's going to happen if I move the bullet 15,000 miles an hour into your brain. Same difference. Doesn't make any difference. So that sense, relativity is true, but that's the only sense. Okay, that motion is just, it's just, it always adds. You always just say this thing is doing this and this thing is doing this and the two add up and it doesn't matter whether this one did this and that one did that and they add it up it's always just going to be an addition okay and that's it um, two things so you know yours you could just imagine your spaceship is still and you instead made everything in the universe go you know in terms of everything in front of you everything forward of you is now moving the speed of half the speed of light towards you so I could just sit here and look at my camera and look at the computer and look at all this stuff and I could say obviously I'm gonna have a problem if all of a sudden all that shit's moving half the speed of light it's gonna break me into a million little pieces I'm gonna be smushed okay horribly smushed horribly fast so these thought experiments have no connection to the real world and I would argue that even if we could like say take all of the stuff out and make purely real empty space okay no hydrogen atoms no anything to be moving again just a hydrogen atom moving the half the speed of light is going to do tremendous damage to you so it's just you're just out of luck in a universe that has anything in it all right but even if I took all those physical things out of it I'm still stuck with the force stuff still being in it and the fact is is that you're mechanisms your atoms still have to rearrange themselves to be functional in a stream of force that's that aggressive and um, so yeah I could argue that you we sort of see evidence that this is true in the sense that no big things in the universe no comets and no asteroids and no hunks of anything blown off of a Sun nothing like a baseball size is moving these tremendous speeds and theoretically they should be if you know it was possible if if it, if there wasn't something that's stopping it and the only thing that can be stopping it is is that it obviously does get degraded it uh, falls apart the matter the bullet itself can't be moved at that speed if you try to move it at that speed the atoms fall apart the turning thing turns into a bunch of electrons and protons all right you can't force the matter to go that fast it just doesn't want to be compliant um, it can go fast, um, but it can't go that fast. Uh, <clears throat> so you can push it and you can make it go, but eventually the stream will get too aggressive. It's like a motorboat or something else, right? There's a certain speed you can go to, and when you go past that speed, the forces all become way too aggressive and the thing falls apart. So it works for a while and then it stops working. And the same thing would be true of this physical the physical universe has the same sort of limitations your your mechanism falls apart um, so there is no you're never going to accelerate anything to these insane anything made of matter to these ex, extreme speeds um, and so even half the speed of light let alone the speed of light or past the speed of light to get to the past it just it, that's kind of nonsense that's never going to happen and the past wouldn't be there anyway so even if you could go faster than the speed of light you're not going to change what actually took place on the other the other location so you can sort of understand that if you have a place here <coughs> and you're over here okay and this place is creating things things are happening at a certain rate okay i don't know how to describe that but it's happening at a certain rate so things are coming off of it. And you could say that pieces of its information, you know, stuff you could say is at different places in time, you know, in terms of the radiation it's producing or whatever. And, you know, if you try to, you know, uh, go faster than those events, that is, I, I somehow go faster than this thing moved, and I'm going to somehow get back to a point where it didn't leave. Well, I can't get back to the point where it didn't leave. So I, I just can't do it. So even if I went faster, I'd still get to a point after that left. That's just, you know, so there's no, 
there, there's no changing the fact that this thing left at a certain time and even if I go back faster than this thing left you can see like if it was just a baseball you threw you know you can sort of understand that the baseball is already in it's pretty on its way and me going fast baseball is it's already left so it's gone and time did go really backward in time you can't you can't left doesn't mean the event the event of the photon leaving so the photon left you go faster than the photon so what the photon already left so the event already happened so you can't get to an earlier event just can't do it so you go as fast as that event maybe can't even you know it doesn't matter you when you get to the object the object counted this even though this was very fast it still wasn't faster than the time that took so you'll just get to the object as it is now so right now it's a certain thing now now right this minute it's a certain condition you'll get to it now but you won't get to it back then so all you can do is get to it now instantaneously so if you could go instantaneous speed you can get to it instantaneously okay so I'm there now all right I can't get to any place called then okay I can only get to it now if you get me I mean you know now is this is here this is here this is here this is here that's now I can get there when this is now I can't get there before this left I can only get there now. Okay, anyway, so the whole thing doesn't make any sense. All right, um, and then as for the forwards, things in time, right, they, you know, this look all gets so, oh, Jesus, you know, this is really, <laughs> I gotta fix that now. Well, you can see it's, it does suspend, <laughs> yeah. But it does this password thing, which I gotta get rid of that, because that's just a pain in the ass. Alright, sorry about the, hopefully that isn't too big a, whatever, blotch in the video. Oh, God. <sighs> Change is a bitch. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, oh, there's almost a smiley face here and two eyeballs. Yeah. Anyway, um... All right, so they do this, you know, uh, your time dilated crap, right? So you're going very, very fast. So I increase your speed and I make you go very, very fast. And the theory is, is that, um, you know, I can, I can make it so if you have a flashlight and you're going half the speed of light, the light on the flashlight will still look like, from your perspective, it's still going the speed of light. It's leaving the flashlight the speed of light. But the fact is, to see it that way, the rest of the universe is still on their regular clock. And the rest of the universe, all the clocks are going really, really, really fast. And everything's already happened. Stars are blowing up. Everything's, you know, it's like running the universe much, much faster. So it's not like if you did have a window and you were doing this, oh, yeah, my flashlight is working. I see the, the light move away from me at the speed of light. So it's working. And I'm moving half the speed of light. The rest of the universe is buzzing. I mean, t billions of years are passing by in what was a minute. You know, you're just you're just eating up the universe in terms of the rest of the activity in the universe will be just what it was before. Like I said, novas, all kinds of stuff. You'll millions of years can go by, and you'll think it was you know a day. And um, that's the only way you could see that actually happen because it would take a long time at half the speed of light for you to see the light it's going a little half half twice as fast so it would take twice as long for the light to look that way so actually it would just be twice as much right at half the speed and it's when you get closer and closer to the speed of light that the the changes you right this business on this dopey curve you know so it's when you get to this point is when the outrageous amounts of time dilation happen so when you get really close to the speed of light is when millions of years can go by so for you to see the flashlight beam move at its regular the light to move its regular speed everything has to happen twice as fast so 30 seconds is 60 seconds so for you 
and but the rest of the universe so <clears throat> so see I mean, even making sure you say it the right way like one minute in the real universe <clears throat> will be two minutes for you that kind of thing but anyway so anyway everything has to slow down for that to be the reality the point is is the rest of the universe is on a regular clock there's nothing broken there's no time frame the the theory is that this all you're doing is suspending your animation your mechanisms are all slowing down so me moving my arm like this just happens slower okay it doesn't you know and my perception of it obviously is also slower so it happens at a slower frame rate so there's a bunch of ghosting maybe you know the image it's just a frame rate issue you're just slowing down the frame rate the whole thing's slowing down and um but that presumes that somehow you're moving through space okay at this great speed and somehow none of these little particles the rest of the universe aren't hitting you anymore like you aren't interacting with all the little hydrogen atoms and all the other crap in the universe and of course you are the gamma rays are still flying into you the x-rays are still flying into you and the point is, is if they're coming towards you their frequency is doubling okay so that's a real problem Right, you go from weak X-rays to hard X-rays, and then you go from hard X-rays to you know hard gamma rays. Um, so you're getting hit by real hard radiation. You're being you know bombarded by a very um, it's a lot of energy you're creating, a lot of impact. And so this whole idea that you're just going to benignly do this, and you're not going to have to interact with the universe in front of you, like somehow you could just watch the rest of the universe happen really fast. And none of it has to affect you. I mean, you know, they had, they make this like this sort of frame here where you're in a special bubble. And uh, somehow these events aren't happening anymore. And that the opposite is going to happen behind you where nothing is get, getting to you from behind you anymore. No asteroid can catch up with you. No comets. No anything. None of that reality can get to you. So anything moving slower than half the speed of light can't you can't even see it you don't even know it exists anymore you can't see reflections you can't see nothing anything that happens is invisible or well no it's twice as it takes twice as long to get to you um the reflections yeah you're not changing reflections but you're changing its motion so things that would have hit you aren't going to hit you okay because you're moving faster than they are so they can't get to you anymore. So one side of you is not getting hit by anything hardly, and the other side is getting bombarded with everything that's twice as energetic. And obviously that would be a uh, tremendous menace to your structure, in my opinion. And your atoms won't survive it, and uh, the forces holding your electrons to protons, the whole charge mechanism will break down because of this huge imbalance in uh, the energy, the field you're going to be affected by. And you can feel the difference. You can say, you know, look, we're affected by gravity and we're pushed up back by the Earth, and so we're jiggled. But we don't really feel it. But it's a very slight jiggle compared to this kind of jiggle, okay? I mean, the, this kind of velocity is a huge difference compared to what we experience. I mean, the speed of light is a gigantic number, you know, 300 million. Uh, meters per second, uh, you know, and we go 20,000, you know, if we're, you know, I think the fastest human has gone 20,000 miles an hour, and then you could add in other factors like how fast the galaxy's spinning and how fast the thing's moving through, but all those can be additive and subtractive, two motions can be in different directions, and as I've sort of pointed out before, is for anything to acquire velocity, it has to acquire it. That is, the Earth had to acquire its velocity in its orbit. It didn't just have it for free. So it had to be hit by stuff, and hit by stuff, and hit by stuff. And it had to be hit by more stuff going one way than going the opposite way, obviously, to have a velocity. And um, everything has to acquire velocity. You can't just, you know, you don't get it for free. Um, you know, something has to interact with you and it has to interact in such a way that it doesn't blow you up or break you into pieces or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you have to, it has to be benign acceleration. So even to get to the point where you're going very fast, you have to accelerate at some rate that's um, compatible with your matter. And we know that even going a little bit faster than gravity, any 
going faster than the, um, you know, to overcome the balance that you're in now. You're jiggling now, and now you're going to have to add extra motion in one direction. It doesn't take much extra motion, you know, to start flattening you into the chair, smushing you pretty hard. It doesn't take much acceleration um, for you to feel the effects of your matter having to be rearranged to accept its velocity. And that's really what the whole matter equation is. I mean, to throw something in space or to do this or to do that, it all requires um, energy. And it requires its, its resistance is not some kind of law. Its resistance is, is, is that you're actually rearranging the matter to throw it. You have to move all of its uh, electrons and protons have to be put in new positions to be able to take on the universe that you're pushing it into, this place where more force is going to hit from one direction than from another direction. So the atom, if it's in balanced force, it can have a shape. But if you imbalance the force by moving it, well then it has to change its shape to accommodate that movement. And this is why, um, you know, I've sort of pointed out a reasonable theory for why uh, isotopes, radioactive isotopes, decay slower. You know, that's why the atomic clocks are affected by velocity, is that they do require an event, okay, that's dependent on their uh, structure uh, to decay. So their decay isn't, it's caused by the external world. Decay isn't caused by the intern their internal structure. It's a combination of the two. Obviously, their structure gives them a vulnerability, like they have a hole here and a hole here, um, and energy has to go into these two holes at the same time. Well, obviously, if I move it in the direction of one of those holes, then it's going to have more energy hitting this hole than that hole, and therefore the idea of having a simultaneous event is reduced. The likelihood is reduced because you've moved, you've broken your probability. You've created a, where there's more heads than tails possible and therefore you can't go heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails and that's what you need to break the atom so to speak. So the thing you need, the event, the event doesn't happen as regularly because you've changed the circumstances of what causes decay in the first place. And you can sort of understand that decay is kind of a nuclear thing, that the nucleus is obviously an arrangement, in my opinion, of neutrons and protons. Neutrons and protons have to be shaped a certain way to be able to be given velocity, to be able to resist force. So I've sort of gone to that in the drag video. So there's a subject playlist that goes over some of these subjects. But um, so anyway, the point is, is that it's mechanical. There's nothing, they, they, there's rules, and they're all just mechanical rules. <laughs> hit, no hit. Um, you know, the paths either intersect or they don't. The whole universe is just uh, energy and matter, and all the energy is moving in straight lines through the universe. There's no curved line anywhere. Every bit of force is just traveling. So if you make a photon, you just have them at a frequency, and they're traveling. And they're traveling with polarization. So let's draw the polarization. Oh, it's not quite in the video. Uh, my bad. Um, so, you know, they're, draw, they're flying parallel. And uh, magnetism would just be the segregation of the force. That is, there's an, there's a, an electron force and a proton force. Well, then you should draw them two different ways. <laughs> electron and proton force. And... Um, you know, you just segregate them, all the little round ones go out this way, and all the square ones go out this way, and therefore you've created something that's going to affect electrons and protons inversely. Um, and electricity is through atoms, so that's a whole different thing anyway. That's not elemental, that's something that happens inside of atoms, between atoms. Uh, so it's not really a force. Uh, it's just photons moving, pushing electrons. Um, and that's the whole point. The point is that the electron and the protons are just dead. They're, you know, they're dead things. They don't do anything until a force bit hits them, and then they do something. And there's two different things they can do. You know, if I hit the electron with a proton force, okay, it just diverts the force into another dimension. 
you know, it just goes on its way. And if I hit uh, a proton with a proton force, though, then it gives it momentum. It moves in a direction, gets into a new location, blah, blah. So with those simple mechanisms, you can... Uh, the rest of the universe can emerge out of those simple functions. And anytime you see a curved line, like the orbit of the Earth, it's made out of straight line force. Okay, little bits of energy that aren't, aren't curved. <laughs> They're moving in straight lines. And, uh, you know, so all the curved lines are just a byproduct of some straight line. And that really goes for charge. So when they tell you that charge and Maxwell's equations have something to do with waves. They really don't. Uh, the wave is just another way of drawing this, okay? Rays of force. So you can say, uh, oh, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna visualize that as a wave front. And then I'll put a wave front here, and I'll put a wave front here. Well, those are arbitrary. And all it's really representing is that, no, these lines are the force. These rays are the force. And you can see them. If you want to sit there and say these rays equal this, you can go ahead and say that. But to the ray, to the soldier, they're not a wave of soldiers. Each individual soldier is an individual soldier. And that's the way the force really is. It's made of something. When they say there's a field... No, there's not a field unless there's soldiers. Until you put the soldiers in, there's no field. And um, the forces of charge and things like that are really equal, proportional, standardized. It's a basic thing that happens constantly. And so you can do this wave thing, but it's not how the force is produced. It's not how it really is interacting. The soldier from, you know, America has to go all the way to Germany and he has to kill a German soldier. <laughs> he has to, uh, you know, well, see, he can't kill the soldier, so it's a bad example. Um, but the point is, is the force has to go to the object, then it can reflect and do something, but the force can't hit the force. It has to go to the object to interact with it, and that's the real mechanism, and, you know, yeah, whatever. I've been over it. And over it and over it and over it. Um, so I guess there's, uh, you know, wave, pilot wave theory is, is um, I don't know if it, there's much to go over. I mean, it just has this woo term. You know, it just says that for no good reason, the ray bends. And then it starts going a ray again, and it bends, and then it goes a ray again. It's, it's a, you know, you can mathematically do that to create the end result, but you're just lying because the real path was you know, the real path. I mean, the thing traveled the path. It didn't travel some loop de doo um, So, yeah, so that's probably enough of a video. I don't know if there's other subjects worth getting into in this video. Uh, just a lament. I mean, all these people do have, you know, unfortunately, I mean, Bohm's nerdy as hell and religious, <laughs> you know, and um, the theory doesn't add anything. It's just another uh, abstraction. It's just another, like I said, it's just a pilot gremlins. You know, you know there's stewardesses showing the force where to go. I mean, it just it doesn't add any value to a physical universe or a physical understanding. It's not physics, in my opinion. Um, and I'm just saying that, you know, this idea that somehow you are compelled to believe in waves and you're compelled to believe in woo like magic or you know like I said the bent line how does it know to bend the photon how does it know to do that you know like it has a structure or something and I'm sitting here saying that just doesn't make any sense and I'm not saying it because I, I have some bias against the universe made out of bent photons or crooked things it's just I can't imagine what's causing them to be crooked. How do they know to be crooked? What physical? You know, there's nothing mechanically about them that says they have to be crooked. So unless you create some complex ether that, you know, causes them to spin funny and then they spin crooked or fly crooked, I don't know. It's just way more complicated than I think 
logic says the universe should get simpler, not more complicated. The functions shouldn't be more complicated. The elemental functions, because then our universe would be more complicated. And again, we'd have asteroids moving half the speed of light, and there aren't any. So, uh, anyway. Yeah, there's just... You know. At some point, there's no point, I guess, because no one's going to argue on the same playing field with the same rules about what a word means, like energy. I mean, you know, that's, that's the thing, too. When a physicist starts talking about human beings having energy, you know, the energy of people, you know, and getting things done, and I mean, you're just like, no, you can't, you know. Yeah, we use these words in different contexts to mean different things. But a scientist should know, well, we shouldn't have done that in the first place. You know, we shouldn't have the same word for very different concepts. And even if we have that and we accept that that's what society does, when I'm talking my physics, I should be explicit and say, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to use the same word for two different kinds of things. You know, but anyway. Yeah, that's probably enough. So there's just no, um, you know, until we find somebody to communicate with, somebody to defend the conventional notions, you know, there's pretty much a stalemate here. It's all one way, and that's the way they want it. They want it the one way. I've offered $1,500 for somebody with a substantial YouTube channel uh, to uh, argue elemental physics. Um, and how um, there's plenty of evidence that everything they believe is just made up bullshit. And the evidence is in the fact that they don't have any good evidence. The evidence for their phenomenon sucks. They have this bold assertion that one object, one force bit, one thing moving the speed of light breaks all the rules. And it can interact with force. Force can interact with force. Uh, soldiers can interact with soldiers in the in the context of gravity and light. Somehow gravity affects photons and causes them to bend. <laughs> okay, um, as if they're uh, matter bits, as if they're interactors. When in no example does any force ever interact with another force, and um, and the evidence is this crappy Eddington experiment, which is just garbage. They never repeated it from space with a 400 better resolution, 400 times better resolution. Never done. And there's just no good reason why it was never done, right? I mean, maybe they did it and they just didn't work. And they said, well, we can't publish our it didn't work results. I don't know why they would say that because, frankly, they, you know, it would be big news. Um, but, you know... I don't know, is that part of the religion? They just have to protect the sacred beliefs, and so um, they're not going to publish their failed uh, experiment. Because it's hard to imagine that nobody's done it. All the people controlling all of that technology up there in space, and it hasn't occurred to any of them to take, you know, a half hour and take a few pictures of, um, you know, Suns behind the sun, so to speak. Uh, but anyway, you know, I've been through some of the, the just terrible evidence. The galactic images from space are mathematically silly. Uh, you know, there's no symmetry. You know, again, all the rules of gravity are being broken, and they invent dark matter to explain why the the shapes are wrong. Um, I mean, this is desperate physics. It isn't well evidenced physics. And this simple model explains it all. So, but they will just keep clinging, cling, cling, cling. But anyway, I, you know, I can only do my job. I can reason with you, and that's all I can do. And if you're not reasonable, that's not my fault. It really isn't. All right, that didn't work. Uh, save. Okay. Yeah, we'll see if we get. <laughs> see if it works. <laughs>